Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for being here today, and we're going to begin with the program. And uh, if you don't have a program, they can be located back at the tent. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, there are masks there, thin blue line masks. There's water and other refreshments, uh, should you need that. Um, but I'd like to uh, cer certainly welcome you to the city of Livonia and this uh, beautiful Memorial Park. To get things started, uh, I'd like to introduce Mayor Maureen Miller Brosnan, the mayor of the city of Livonia, for welcoming remarks. Thank you, Chief. And good evening, everybody. I am honored to serve as the mayor of the city of Livonia. And I know that our first calling as public servants is to keep our community safe. Over the last year, that charge has been tested like never before. Keeping our community safe has never seemed more challenging than it is today. But the sworn officers of the Livonia Police Department have stepped up for us as I knew they would through the course of this pandemic. They've navigated ever greater difficult situations because of the threat of COVID-19, but also because we've seen an increase in mental health issues in our community and the impact of a downturn in the economy and the effect that that's had on our families here. But through it all, they have served with honor and selflessness. And because of that, and because of that service, I am glad that you're all here today uh, to help us to recognize that. We gather here to pay today to pay our respects for the 394 officers who lost their lives in the line of duty nationwide over the last year. We also gather to remember all those officers who have sacrificed their lives in service of community, including the four officers who passed in the line of duty across Livonia's history. I wanna thank you all for being here today to join us in remembering their lives and in celebrating their service. I'm grateful today to be joined by Livonia Police Department's Chief Curtis Cade, members and retirees from the Livonia Police Department. I love seeing all of your faces out there. This feels like a giant homecoming when we get a chance to get together like this, as well as representatives from our Wayne County Sheriff's Office and our keynote speaker, FBI Special Agent in Charge, Timothy Waters. Your presence here today is the greatest credit to the way that our community has rallied around our law enforcement officers. And now I want to turn the podium over to Pastor Willie and Yvette Warren, and they're going to provide us with the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you again for joining us. Please stand for the lowering of the flag and the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisibly, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please remain standing for the invocation, Pastor Joel Lindman. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that the pledge we just stated said we're one nation under God. We thank you, Father, for your divine mercy, for your sovereignty. Father, we thank you for the government you put in place. We thank you for families that make up the smallest unit of government, Father. We thank you for moms and dads. Father, most of all, we thank you for the structure that you've given us for the men and women that have come now to protect us, to serve us. Father, we thank you for that, and we ask for your hand of protection on them. Father, we come tonight to honor those that have given their lives for a greater service. 
Father, we are struck by your grace and your mercy. And as we honor them tonight, Father, help us to keep the focus on you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please remain standing for the presentation of the wreath. Thank you. Please take your seats. Retired police officer Harold Higgins will now play Going Home.
I was very honored that our keynote speaker accepted the invitation to uh, address us today. Uh, Mr. Waters began his career with the FBI in 2000. After graduation from the FBI Academy, he was assigned to work the White Collar Crime Unit with uh, Matters in Detroit. Following the attacks on September 11th, Mr. Waters transitioned to work counterterrorism counter matters. In 2005 and 2006, he participated in overseas deployment to Iraq and Afghanistan in support of the military and intelligence community operations. Mr. Waters was promoted to supervisory special agent of a reactive counterterrorism counter squad in Detroit in 2007. In 2010, Mr. Waters served a one-year assignment as a legal attache in Pakistan. Mr. Waters then returned to Detroit and continued as a squad supervisor of a counterterrorism squad focused on threats from ISIS and Al Qaeda. He was then promoted to assistant special agent in charge in 2014 and served in that capacity for the Detroit's national security and, and administrative branches. Mr. Waters has served as Deputy Assistant Director of the Critical Incident Response Group, responsible for managing the FBI's tactical response, counter IED, surveillance, crisis management, and behavioral analysis resources. He was promoted to the Senior Executive Services in, 2000, in January of 2019 when he was selected to serve as the Director of National Cyber Investigative Joint Task Force an FBI-led interagency team comprised of over 35 United States partner agencies that serves as a national focal point for the coordination and integration and sharing of cyber threat information. Fortunately for our region and for our state, in 2020, December, Mr. Waters was promoted to the position that he now, that he now has as a special agent in charge for the Detroit FBI. In his role, he is responsible for all FBI operations in the state of Michigan. He has earned a Bachelor's of Science degree from the United States Military Academy, served as an inter, inter, infantry officer in the United States Army for eight years before joining the FBI. He's earned a Master's degree in Business Administration from the University of Michigan Dearborn in 2017. And to add to that, on a, on a personal level within our agency, we are uh, very fortunate that we have strong partnership with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. We've had uh, folks, we still have folks assigned uh, to, the, to the Bureau in various capacities, and uh, that partnership continues and will continue for a very long time, especially under the leadership of Mr. Waters. Mr. Timothy Waters. Thanks, Kirk, for those very kind words. I appreciate it. It's really an honor for me to be here with you all today. Every May, every May, communities across the country gather to observe the National Police Week. This year, I am honored to be here at Larry Niehasel Park on behalf of the FBI in Michigan to recognize and thank all of our law enforcement colleagues for their service. The FBI is proud to stand with you as we work together to protect our families and our communities. This week, we also pause to remember those brave officers, deputies, and agents who gave their lives to protect their fellow citizens. Those like Larry Niehasel, who was killed 10 years ago when his team moved in to arrest two violent burglary subjects. Larry dedicated his life to the service of others, and his loss reminds us that the safety and freedom we all come we all enjoy comes at a steep price. We reflect upon the sacrifices of Larry and all those being honored today. We take strength from their examples of heroism and courage, and in their honor, we resolve to, to, to continue their noble work. I come from a family of grandparents who emigrated to the United States from Ireland. Many of my uncles served in the New York City Police Department, and I am the son of a New York City firefighter. So I learned early in life about the quiet professionalism of all those who serve our communities. Like the time when my father didn't return from work, um, and you know he was gone for like two weeks, and I asked my mother every single night, hey, you know, I was about four or five, mom, where's dad? And she said, oh, son, don't worry, he's working overtime. So dad was working overtime for two weeks straight. Uh, in reality, dad was in a fire in the South Bronx when, when the floor collapsed from under him and he fell two floors into a raging fire below. 
and he was spending two weeks in a hospital recovering. Now, I didn't, re I didn't learn what really happened until about 10 years after the fact, and I certainly didn't learn that from my father, I can tell you that. I am grateful for the many sacrifices of those who came before me, which serves as a constant reminder of the legacy and service I've inherited and must continue to honor. All of us who serve in law enforcement carry forward this legacy of integrity and service. We also share a great privilege. We have jobs that will allow us to contribute in significant ways to our community. We protect the innocent from harm. We defend the vulnerable. And we bring lawbreakers to justice. We should never forget how our collective work serves to make our communities better in every way. Yet this privilege also brings hardship and risks, as each of you know all too well. For the last 18 months, our law enforcement agencies have been tested in ways we could have never imagined. When the pandemic hit and most of the world shut down and went to some type of remote work, work environment, day in and day out, law enforcement officers across the country went to work, epitomizing the bravery, bravery and resilience this job requires. With all the worry and uncertainty out there, law enforcement has stepped up. We've come to work because we know our communities need us. And more importantly, we know that we can never let them down. 2020 was one of the deadliest years for law enforcement in United States history. Hundreds of officers were killed in a line of duty, in line of duty incidents or from COVID last year. Each of these losses is a tragedy for the families who lost loved ones, for the departments and agencies that lost a friend and colleague, and for the communities who lost an ally and a, and a protector. But the nature of our profession means we have to persevere in the face of this crisis, and we have done just that. Despite the pandemic, the danger, and the stress, we continue to show up for these jobs, to serve justice and to help people. And frankly, there's no better work out there. Anyone who serves in law enforcement understands and accepts that on any given day, fulfilling your duty as an officer or a deputy or an agent might require you to lay down your life. We know this because of the names and the stories we hear today of those who have gone before us. Nothing is more worthy of a dedicated moment of our time than honoring those who sacrificed everything to protect the American people and uphold the Constitution of the United States. In February, the FBI lost two of our own during the execution of a search warrant in Miami, Florida. And thank you to Kurt for that letter that you sent immediately following that. It meant a lot to us. At the funeral of one of those agents, Laura Sch uh, Schwarzenberger, Director Ray spoke about bravery and heroism. In part, he said, we talk about courage and bravery and selflessness. We talk about the heroism of law enforcement, but heroism comes in many forms. There's the heroism of those that rush headlong into danger without a second thought of their own personal safety. But there's also a quiet heroism that cannot be discounted. The heroism of the individual who simply does their job with dignity and dedication with a devotion to service. A lot of people recognize the countless acts of bravery and heroism demonstrated by law enforcement professionals across Michigan and the United States. What goes unnoticed far too often, however, are the countless acts of compassion and kindness that our folks show to members of, the, of our communities every day, our acts of thoughtfulness and generosity that go above and beyond. All of us in the FBI are honored to stand with you as we pay tribute to our fallen heroes during police week. Thank you again for the brave and heroic work you do to keep the community safe. Thank you also for your acts of kindness and compassion you show to your citizens every single day. Thank you for the support you've shown to me personally and to the men and women of the FBI across the state of Michigan. May God bless you and keep you safe. Thank you.
Thank you, Tim. Appreciate those, those words of inspiration. At this point in your program, we were going to begin to recognize our fallen. When your officer, your trooper, your deputy's name is read, a family member, please stand. You will be met with a member of the honor guard, and then you will be given a, a, a rose or flower in their memory, and then you will be escorted down to the wreath, and then you will place the, the uh, rose into the wreath in their memory. The Livonia Police Officer, Line of Duty Deaths. Patrolman, Sidney Detloff, End of Watch, January 23, Officer James Kelly, end of watch, April 10, Officer Irvin Johnston, end of watch, January 19th, 2007. Officer Larry Niehazel, end of watch, January 17th, 2011.
At this time, we would like to recognize and recognize the 2019 through 2021 Michigan law enforcement officers that died in the line of duty. Sheriff Washington and fellow colleagues, please step forward. Thank you, Chief Kate. Commander Donna Faye Collins, end of watch, March 25th, 2020. Corporal Dean Savard, end of watch, April 3rd, 2020. Corporal Bryant Searcy, end of watch, September 2nd, 2020.
Sheriff Benny N. Napoleon. End of watch, December 17, 2020. Thank you. The Detroit Police Department. Sergeant Rasheen McLean, end of watch, November 20th, 2019. Captain Jonathan Parnell, end of watch, March 24th, 2020. Officer Waldus Johnson, end of watch, May 31st, 2020.
Thank you. Monroe County Sheriff's Office, Animal Control Officer Darian Young, end of watch, June 6, 2020. Michigan State Police, Trooper Caleb Starr, end of watch, July 31st, 2020. Thank you. Bloomfield Hills Public Safety Department, Sergeant Steven Splann, end of watch, August 2nd, 2020. Thank you. DeWitt Township Police Department. Sergeant William Darnell, end of watch, November 4, 2020. Thank you. Clinton Township Police Department, Chief Fred Posovitz, March 22nd, 2021.
Livonia Police Department retirees. Officer Gregory Abraham, February 16th, 2020. Lieutenant Richard Widmeyer, April 19th, 2020. Chief Lee Grieve, May 11, 2020. Sergeant Paul Wood, June 28, 2020.
Sergeant Shirley Garrison, August 2nd, 2020. Officer Francisco Danny Longhi, September 22nd, 2020. Lieutenant Milan Verajan, October 7th, 2020. Officer Ronald Proudlock, October 12th, 2020. Sergeant Lawrence Little, November 2nd, 2020.
Officer Nicholas Payne, November 9th, 2020. Lieutenant Philip Byer, January 28th, 2021. Deputy Chief William Hoff, April 10th, 2021. At this point in the program, for those of you that have memorial candles from the, the kiosk or the canopy, feel free to ignite them or light them in memory. And again, I will uh, warn those that are in attendance that have small children, shortly we will have the three volley salute. And uh, I did see a pet here at one point, but if there's a pet or small children, uh, it again, it is very, very loud. And also at this point, retired officer Harold Higgins will play Amazing Grace.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the three volley salute. Remain standing for taps, flyover, and benediction. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. God of all righteousness, lead us in ways of justice and peace as we depart from this place, having honored those who have shown courage and fortitude for what is good and right, those who have given that full measure of devotion. We turn to you again and ask your blessing upon all members of law enforcement and our first responders in the exercise of their duties. Instill in their hearts strength in wisdom and right judgment. May they always uphold those values with which you have graced our nation and our community. May they be aware always of the dignity of all individuals as they are aware of your presence in their lives. Strengthen them as men and women of honor and as examples for us all of service and of seeking what is good and right and true. We ask your continued guidance and inspiration for them and for us all. Keep us safe in your care. May all of us seek together to further the victory of justice and truth. We ask this in your holy and everlasting name. Amen. Please be seated.
The years 2020 and 2021 have been terrible years. Certainly COVID has taken enormous toll on our country and in our profession. Fighting an invisible enemy is incredibly difficult. Police and fire cannot work remotely. No matter the threat, we are on the front line. Being on the front line can have tragic consequences. Those consequences are recognized here tonight. We must never forget the commitment and the loss that all members of law enforcement and their families commit themselves to. It is a heavy price. We've also witnessed and experienced incredible scrutiny and criticism of law enforcement. We have found our profession painted with a broad brush. I've been in this profession for 42 years. I've witnessed and participated in a great deal of change, change for the better. We, you, are incredible people. We have taken the challenge to serve and has demonstrated today to serve at great risk. This profession continually cha challenges itself to be better, to educate and train and prepare ourselves to serve and protect, to serve as guardians and protect as warriors. Do not let the loud voices get you down. Know that your community that you serve respect you and appreciate you and your commitment to keep them safe. Of the four Livonia police officers that we have lost, three of them were lost during my, the span of my career. I remember vividly sitting at my desk in the Detective Bureau in April of 1992 and hearing the police and fire dispatch to a medical emergency in front of City Hall. Within a couple minutes of the call, we were notified that the medical call was that of Officer Kelly, who was down as he trained with the SWAT team in front of City Hall. We lost Officer Kelly on that day, April 10th, to a training cardiac event. I remember the evening of January 19th, 2007, now being a captain with the police department, being home that evening, receiving the call that Irvin Johnston was transported to the hospital. Irvin had been in a physical situation to restrain an individual in a mental health crisis that required physical exertion. Once the situation was controlled, Irvin resumed his patrol duties. Shortly thereafter, he suffered a cardiac event which took his life. And I remember the evening of January 17th, 2011, 10 years ago, then as deputy chief at home monitoring the police radio as our surveillance team followed two habitual offenders for home invasion. I remember listening to the surveillance team follow the suspects to a home in Walled Lake where they watched the pair commit a crime. As the officers began to affect the arrests, I remember the terror in their voices as they yelled shots fired. Over the police radio and then found Officer Nee Hazel and his assailant, both deceased. Each are tragedies experienced through service to this community. Shortly after the death of Officer Nee Hazel, a committee was established to take this piece of land where we are today, which then consisted of a grass field, a stone dolphin, and a few scrub trees, and then transition that piece of property, this piece of property, into this incredible memorial park. A committee was established and the fundraising began in record time, funds were raised strictly through private donations to make this park possible. One of the committee members at that time was Councilman Brandon Kritzman, who's an architect by trade. Through the sketches, various renderings, and as he and I joke, as well as through tears and beers, he put his talents to work, which resulted in this beautiful park. And I know Brandon is with us. If you'd raise your hand, Brandon. Thank you very much. You may have noticed the motorcycle that's on display under the kiosk, or the canopy, I'm sorry. Another example of community support and engagement in the recent creation of the Livonia First Responder Foundation. The officers of the foundation are myself, Fire Chief Dave Hevner, which I know was in the crowd, Dave Varga, who I've seen in the seats, representing the mayor's office, Dan West from the Chamber of Commerce, Chuck Dardis, which is 
standing guard at the motorcycle from Alpha USA, Steve Seattle from Roush Industries, and Brandon Briscoe, our uh, legal counsel. The mission of the foundation is described in your program. The displayed motorcycle is being raffled to establish seed money for the foundation. One of the goals of the foundation is continuing to invest in this park. Please consider that as you leave. This park and the First Responder Foundation are only two examples of this community support to police and fire. There are many, many people to thank for tonight's event. Certainly our honor guard under the leadership of Lieutenant Andrew McKinley, Mr. Martin Donnelly, who is here with us today, Raleigh Hoskins, Diane Wartarian, Heidi Marzolo, Terry Grachecki, and the DPW team that put all of this together, set the chairs, the tents, the sound system, uh, John Wojnar, Katie Holbart, Josh Krzykowski, and Ken Stewart. A special shout out to the Livoni Company of DB Landscaping. And I hope Robert is here. Robert, there you are, my man. Had a, a team of folks here all week preparing this site for this event. And they did a beautiful job. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> Lee from French's Flowers decorated the, the ribbons and the lanterns and donates her time and her, her talents. All of the companies that listed in the program, I want to recognize Team Livonia from the Police Unity Tour. Uh, these are Livonia officers and survivors who take part in a grueling 300-mile bicycle ride that begins in New Jersey and culminates in Washington, D.C. This ride occurs annually during Police Week to raise funds for the National Law Enforcement Memorial. Battered and bruised, as one of our Honor Guard members that participated had a terrible accident, uh, these officers drove home today from Washington, D.C. to ensure that they could participate in today's ceremony. And last, but by no means least, each of you, the surviving family members of our fallen. As we plan today's ceremony, we recognize the challenges that you have endured and saying goodbye during the COVID pandemic. It is our hope that this event offers a sliver of peace in recognizing and remembering your loss. As time marches forward, tears begin to subside. And as we reflect on the memories of our loved one, our colleague, a smile will return. Seize those moments and never forget. Thank you very much. Have a great evening.